So Leeds' very own English teacher have won the Mercury Prize in 2024 for their debut album, This Could Be Texas. Let's have a look at how and why they did it. So this is a pretty emotional win for a lot of people. Um, it's a landmark win in the Mercury Prize and it's another beautiful moment of an underdog band doing really well in English Teacher. And lots of critics agree that This Could Be Texas is one of the best albums this year. It's actually one that definitely was in the top 10 of my album list this year, but maybe one that I let get overshadowed a bit by other albums by the likes of Fontaine's DC, The Last Dinner Party and 21 Pilots. So I'm really glad it's been thrust back into my consciousness. And it's another really cool one because I've actually interviewed English Teacher. I met them live at Leeds last year and had a really cool chat with them. So it's nice seeing them go on to, to do something as monumental as winning a Mercury Prize. It was up against some stiff competition. So let's have a look at the, the meat and bones of this album's success. First of all, what is the Mercury Prize? Well, it's a yearly award that gives a prize and a fund of £25,000 to a British or Irish group that have released a creatively outstanding album. It is judged by a panel of industry judges and apparently it is purely judged on the quality of the music in the album. That is all that matters according to the Mercury Prize website. You can see right here the judges decisions are based solely on the quality of music in the albums and this is the £25,000 cash prize that they win. It's really cool as well with the Mercury Prize that even scrolling down here, they don't do any PR other than activity which focuses on the albums they're talking about. So it's very much a pro artist, artist front and center endeavor, which is nice to see in the music industry. If you look at the Mercury Prize, previous winners, you may know a really, really big one in uh, 2006 was Arctic Monkeys debut album, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not, obviously took the world by storm that year. Plaxon's Myths of the Near Future is, in my opinion, one of the best albums of the 21st century. It may have been forgotten a little bit now, but you still have hits like Golden Scans and It's Not Over Yet, which people love. And it kind of invented new rave, this record. Elbows, The Seldom Seen Kid is one of the best indie albums of the 21st century as well. It's just gorgeous, northern, buttery goodness. If you listen to Guy Garvey's vocals. Also, The XX with their debut. Alt J, who I didn't know were British for the longest time. James Blake. Uh, Skepta with his incredible album, which is part of the Breakthrough of Grime in 2016, Konnichiwa. Wolf Alice with their debut. And Arlo Parks, Little Sims coming up all the way to English Teacher this year. So some real legends have won this prize and it's really widely regarded in the music industry for being a prize that's kind of pro artist. It's It's got this allure about it. And I remember growing up in the 2000s, always seeing Mercury Prize nominated or Mercury Prize winner as a, as a label sticker on the packaging of CDs. Now, the Mercury Prize isn't necessarily for a new band, but it's often synonymous with a band who've had a breakthrough year. So we had Charlie XCX nominated this year. Obviously, she's not a new artist, but she had an album that was very culturally influential. A lot of other names on here, like The Last Dinner Party, were on their first album. Corto Alto, English Teacher. These are the breakthrough names. So... Looking down at English Teacher as an amazing indie band from Leeds, why did they win? Well, firstly, I think let's get the obvious out of the way. They made a fucking great album. This Could Be Texas is a really creative and wonderful album that kind of weaves this tapestry of Northern culture with Leeds, Lily Fontaine's kind of patter between singing and spoken word poetry, big hits like this one that's playing in the background now, this is a beautifully constructed album. It's got dashes of Godspeed You Black Emperor, as well as your kind of catchy and more accessible post-punk and kind of indie pop energy. It's just a really good album. And I think everyone who listens to it can see why it is such a charming album and one that so many people have warmed to. Number two, This Could Be Texas has a grounded message. I think with the Mercury Prize, what we tend to see is artists who reflect uh, their surroundings and their upbringing doing well, you know, Arlo Parks, Skepta, uh, Little Sims, these are artists who aren't making, you know, far off sci-fi type albums that are about fantastical worlds. They're, they're quite grounded. They're rooted in English cultural heritage or rather British and Irish cultural heritage. I remember Arctic Monkeys Tranquility Base, Hotel and Casino was nominated as well as I think The Car, but those albums 
probably weren't going to win because they're quite far off and quite dreamy. They're not very grounded. And I think, at least from what I've seen in the past, Mercury Prize judges seem to like something that is a little closer to home and maybe shines a light on the life experience of people in the UK. And this record, you look at some of the lyrics of songs like Broken Biscuits, Mum's Bones Are Breaking, Cutouts in the Photograph, Splitting Our Prescriptions, Broken Biscuits. Lily's lyrics on this track are incredibly raw and, and honest about the sacrifices her mum made growing up. And there's definitely interspersed in the record a lot of whimsy and a lot of escapism, but it is a grounded album and one that offers a window into the lives of creatives, especially in the North, especially in Leeds. Number three, and this is a big one for me as a Brummie, they represent culture outside of London, especially in the North, and a vibrant Leeds indie scene. I interviewed English teacher live at Leeds. If you go to Leeds and go to some of their indie venues like the Wardrobe, the Brudenell Social Club, there is a, a thriving scene there. We've seen bands like Yard Act really break out of it. An English teacher, a kind of the, the shining light, the shining star in that scene after this win. Leeds is a great city and also there has been, I think, a lot of pressure and a lot of understandable backlash against the Mercury Prize recently because the award has been so dominated by London artists for so many years. I knew it was bad, you know, I'm from Birmingham and I always see a massive lack of representation of our artists, especially our alternative and indie artists, even when we've had an amazing scene. But when I looked back at the Mercury Prize, maybe take a guess, take a guess in the comments now, when you think the last time an artist outside of London won the Mercury Prize was. English teacher really bucked a trend here. Ezra Collective, London. Little Sims, London. Arlo Parks, London. Michael Kiwanuka, London. We're back in the 2010s now. Dave Psychodrama, 2019, London. Wolf Alice, London. Sanfa, London. Skepta, London. Benjamin Clementine, London. You have to go back to 2014, 10 years ago, to find Young Fathers and Dead, a hip hop collective from Scotland who won the Mercury Prize. So I think people were kind of starting to say, we really need the Mercury Prize to represent the whole of the UK, not just London. I know there's a lot of culture in London, but there's so much, you know, eclectic and exciting new music out there. And it's nice seeing Leeds, a city with a thriving scene, get the nod. I hope that really opens up the doorway for more artists from outside of London winning this award in the future. And even more beyond that, artists outside of Manchester getting some love, because I feel like London and Manchester can really dominate the UK music scene at times. And maybe this is my Birmingham bias showing, but... We've got a lot of cool artists that are worth recommending and worth showcasing as well. Point number four, the album has a breakout banger on it. I'm talking, of course, about the world's biggest paving slab. This track is kind of the, the catchy anthem of the record. It's got 2.6 million streams, so it's not viral by any means, but you kind of have a variation on this record of real kind of art arty spoken word intricate poetry tracks and straight up bangers and this song is a straight up banger from the first time i heard it it really stuck in my head and there's another track from english teacher which i think is called a55 which i think had the kind of foundations of some of the great like instrumental moments in this track in it but the mercury prize they talk about it the album's got to sound good it's got to have a, a clearly kind of defined and interesting culturally relevant message but it's got to have bangers on it as well and the world's biggest paving slab is a banger. It's catchy. When I saw it live, it was amazing in Leeds, and I always tie it to that time I spent in the city last year covering a number of artists. And interestingly, the last dinner party also played Live at Leeds last year, so I don't know. If you want to see the next Mercury Prize winner, odds on going to Live at Leeds in October. Get your tickets. Point number five, the band aren't fully mainstream yet. Again, I think the whole essence of the Mercury Prize is meant to be about championing the new generation of breakthrough acts. And if you look at the list of bands that were nominated this year, there are quite a few who are already really successful. Obviously, Charlie XCX has taken herself into being a cultural phenomenon this year. C Matt is an existing and popular artist. Getz has been doing the rounds for a while. I think Near Archives is also getting quite a lot of hype over on Spotify and streaming pretty well. With over a million, there you go, 1.5 million streams. So English Teacher, other than Corto Alto on this list, are 
one of the smaller artists with 220,000 monthly listeners. And also, in terms of the chart performance of This Could Be Texas, they managed to get to number 8 in the UK album charts, 5 in Scotland, and 186 in Belgium. Don't ask me why Ultra Top Flanders is there. Every time I hear that, I just think, stupid, stupid sexy, sexy Flanders. Flanders. But you'd hope with the Mercury Prize, and I'm sure the judges were aware of this, that their input in awarding an album this prize could hopefully see a bit of a commercial bump to this record in how well it does. And you would hope again that this album re-enters the charts. Now the Mercury Prize have given it the given it the thumbs up. Number six, with perfect timing at the start of Broken Biscuits. The instrumental variation is huge on this record. We have, even in the first five tracks, such a range. And you can see this in the musicians. You've got piano we're hearing now on Broken Biscuits, that beautiful bass line in the world's biggest paving slab, the guitar across the board from, from Lewis. And you've also got a bit of saxophone in there, which is probably the Black Country New Road inspiration coming in the mix. There is honestly great moments in this album. I think the use of tempo is one of the most impressive things about it. This is the piano loop of Broken Biscuits. And then if you fast forward to This Could Be Texas, the title track, there's this really nice kind of Black Country New Road-esque instrumental part. Like that's very Ansem up there. I remember English teachers saying to me that they studied at Leeds Conservatoire when I interviewed them and that kind of talent really shines through on this album. It's a real musician's album, and I'm sure people who were judging the Mercury Prize were recognizing that as people who know their music, making it as well as commentating it. And you have this really beautiful, rich synth intro to not everybody gets to go to space. Like, the, the fact that you have gorgeous, like, arpeggiator curveballs on this album that has been kind of like, quite stripped back up to this point. It's a very boundary pushing kind of genre defying album in a lot of ways, I think, and it keeps you interested as a listener. So this album just really nicely balances the kind of instrumental orchestral moments with the, the riffy moments. You've got tracks like R&B that just feel like really good rock, another great bass line. And when I saw them live at Leeds, it's clear they can kind of open the pit and get everyone jumping around as well as producing the technical, technically demanding and artistically impressive moments in the record. Number seven, really getting into the kind of big, most important headline moments here. They were on the FIFA soundtrack. We know that the FIFA soundtrack is a kind of hall of fame for some indie bangers. You think about Block Party Helicopter, Muse, Supermassive Black Hole, Swim Deep, One Great Song and I Can Change the World. If the song is on the FIFA soundtrack, you just know it's going to be a banger. And I don't know, maybe that helped push the odds in the favor of English Teacher this year. I'm still calling it FIFA because I don't even know what FC24 is, what it stands for. Football club, it will always be FIFA. And finally, clearly most crucially, number eight. I interviewed them and obviously <laughs> I'm a good luck charm. So, you know. If there's any bands in chat who want to win the Mercury Prize, agreeing to do an interview with me is statistically likely to increase your odds of winning the Mercury Prize. Disclaimer, this may or may not be true. English teacher after a hometown show in the wardrobe live at Leeds. How are we all doing? Doing pretty, pretty good. Very, very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I am not missing the blonde era there. I think uh, it, it was an era for me. It was an era. But joking aside, Speaking to English teacher, it was clear that they're they're very switched on. Have you eaten today so far, Lily? That's Not every band are, and and this is again a uh, waiting for food. This is this is a very much non-technical element that I want to highlight. But I realised after looking back at the video, Lily has got a Donny Darko tattoo, which is very cool. Donny Darko is one of my favourite films. It's kind of like a real cult following two thousands film about I don't know time travel and pocket universes and giant men in bunny rabbit suits. I wish I'd seen that tattoo when I was interviewing them. I would have asked about it. But I think she's also a big fan of Doctor Who, so there you go. If you, you've got the Star Wars t-shirt on, if you like Star Wars, you like nerd culture, you've got a Donnie Darko tattoo, you're, you're more likely to win a Mercury Prize. Like, have you eaten today so far, Lily? That's... I haven't, though. <laughs> I've only had some blueberries today. Yeah, I've had a bit of egg. If you want to bring food, please do, please do. Yeah, Let this was mid-interview. Mid, mid the... I managed to interview them in Leeds uh, at the wardrobe after their set, so eating. they were waiting to eat and hadn't eaten. We just kind of kept the interview rolling. I would, I would have felt so bad for stopping the meeting. It's a really great YouTube series. These are like a one pound burger versus uh, 
Yeah. Oh, so we yeah. could do. Do you know what? It's so. Yeah. Weird. Shout out Buzzfeed worth it, which I just shouted out there. Weird. Should I see this on the table? I'm basically doing some challenges here. I'm doing a thing called Live at Leeds Bingo, where I have like different tiles that I need to fulfill. So like, this is a cool moment. Steal something from a band's rider. I've already managed to do that. And then, beer. It was really boring, but it was it was from the chase. They they kind of they left it unattended, and there was a, I guess an ambiguous understanding that I could take it, but they didn't tell me I could. So I think it still counts as stealing. But one of my other challenges is get a pick from a band. Is are these your picks? Can I, can I have a pick, please? Oh, thank you so much. There you go. A pick from English teacher. And to this day, I realized I had to have a little look around for it, but the pick is still here. I have a pick from English teacher. So there's a nice bit of legacy and a reason why if you're ever interviewing or just meeting a band who are like a new indie band, you should always just try and get something nice to remember that moment by like i don't know a souvenir or something so then it will probably age probably age well so what can we say in conclusion english teacher as mercury prize winners i think the big thing that we can take away is what the judges said which is that there this has been a really tough year for the mercury prize with the final albums being so reflective but there was so much originality and character with a winning lyrical mix of surrealism and social observation along with a subtle way of wearing its musical innovations lightly so basically that's what the mercury prize is about it's about innovation and what this album really does is is innovate and i think that is why english teacher have, have come through here because there's just so much instrumental and lyrical innovation on this album the tempo keeps switching up from track to track there's some really nice transitions you have big bangers in singles like The World's Biggest Paving Slab and R&B and Nearly Daffodils, but you also have kind of quiet, introspective and abstract moments like Broken Biscuits, which it, it took me a while. It's not the most easy listen, this album. But when I really reflected on Broken Biscuits and that beautiful little intricate piano loop, I realized this is a gorgeous and very worthy album of winning the Mercury Prize. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can check out my interview with English Teacher in the description. Let me know who you think might win the Mercury Prize in 2025. Any bands who've got a debut album out, coming out. Any bands you think might be on the radar of big music press in the future. So I can interview them and, you know, hopefully help support them and be a part of that journey. And what more can I say? English Teacher have won the Mercury Prize in 2024. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs>